Hi everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Y'all, isn't this the cutest? Stay tuned. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new friends and new subscribers. Welcome back to my longtime friends and longtime subscribers. Thank you all so much for the wonderful ways in which you support me. And thank you for opening that front door and allowing me to come into your home and visit for 15, 20, 30 minutes. Thank you so much. Today we're going to make something very different for my channel. We are going to make what I'm calling a spinning carousel card. So as you can see, it spins and you're able to put a whole bunch of different messages on each one of these little sections here. And that way the person that you give it to can have it on their desk and can enjoy it throughout the day by just turning it and looking at a different message. I'm going to give you a closer look in just a minute. You're going to be amazed at how easy it is to make this, but y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. All right, y'all, so here is a closer look at my little card carousel. It is just so delightful, so easy, and it doesn't take a whole lot to make it. I am going to stand it up and just spin it so that you can see how easy it is to get this to spin. Now it is two parts and I'll show you the two parts in just a minute once we get ready to make it, but I'm holding it like this so that you can see how easily it is to just put a whole bunch of different messages on the inside. And this just makes it so beautiful for whomever you give this to, to put this on their desk, bedside table, wherever they want to put it to get a quick pick me up at the beautiful messages that you have left for them. So I am just going to set this to the side and I'm going to share with you just how easy it is to make this project. So I'll be using one of my crystal knobs and to make the base of the carousel, I'm just going to be using an empty ribbon roll. The size of the roll doesn't matter. I just found one that was empty and that's what I'm going to use. Then I have a little piece of scrap chipboard and this is probably a one by one square. It just needs to be big enough to fit over that hole. Then I have a piece of three by 12 decorative cardstock. And then I have a piece of six by 12 decorative cardstock. And I am going to be using one part of my metal snaps. So I am going to move this to the side so that you can see just how easy this is going to be. So I have brought in my scoreboard and my piece that measures six by 12. And on the six inch side, we are going to score this at two and at four. Then on the 12 inch side, we're going to score this at two, four, six, eight, and 10. And we are going to follow the method that we used the other day when we made the little two by two meandering books. That is how we're going to make this carousel. So I am going to flip to the trimmer portion and I'm going to line up my score mark that I made at two and I'll be cutting down one, two, three, four, five squares and then I'll stop. So I am just going to go ahead and cut and I'm going to stop right here at the bottom. Then I'm going to slide this over. And I have matched up that second score mark that I made, giving me another two inches. And this time I'm going to score from the bottom and I'll score up five score marks. And then I'll stop. And for those of you who are interested in that visual diagram that I did in the previous video that showed you the arrows cutting down and the arrows cutting up, I'll have that video linked in the description box and you can check it out if any part of this process has been a little bit confusing. But all we're going to do at this point is we're just going to fold our little meandering book style. I am just folding, 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 and then I fold and turn.
And then we're just going to take everything and sort of scrunch it like this. All right, so after you've scrunched everything nice and tight, we're going to start out by taking these two pieces and let's just fold it like this. And I am just going to add my glue on these two pieces. You can do this with tape if you want. My glue just happens to be out. And I'm going to fold that over like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing with these two pieces. So we are just going to take our glue, tape, whatever it is you're using, and place that down. I know a lot of you have your own way of doing the meandering books, so stick with whatever works for you. So now all we're going to do is just start putting this together two by two. So I'll take this one and put it down. Then I'm going to add glue to this one. And we will attach it to this one. Then we're going to take these two and glue them together. And all you're doing is you're just taking sets of two and gluing them together, starting from the end. And that way everything ends up nice and even. So let's glue those. Let's take these two and glue these. And you see how it's taking shape. And then we'll glue these two. And then our final two. And then I'm going to close this by taking some glue and placing some glue like this. But when I close it, I want to make sure that I leave the bottom open just a little bit like that. So I'm not gluing it all the way shut like this. I'm leaving it open a little bit. So there is our nice little carousel. And so now I'm just going to bring in these pieces of ephemera and I'm just going to start putting them down. How you put them down and what you choose to put down is totally up to you. This one says, happy girls shine bright. Place that right there. Then on this side, I think that I'm going to put some of the flowers like that. Then I'm going to stand this up because on the opposite side, I want to place that second bouquet of flowers. So all I'm using are a bunch of ephemera pieces that I have pulled out. And right now I'm just putting down the decorative pieces. Then I'll go back and I'll add some words. So I have this bird. We're going to place that bird down. And like anything that we do, you can add as much or as little as you want. It is completely up to you. I am going to take this one that says, Hello Lovely. And we're going to add some glue. And I'm going to place that right there. And I'm going to take this sweet little flower, add some glue, place it right there. And you just keep going around, placing down your pieces of ephemera. I'm going to take this flower, add some glue. And let's see where we want to put this. I think I'm going to put it right there. So I'm just finding my empty spots now and I'm placing down some of my decorative pieces. So I have another little bouquet of flowers that I think I'm going to place right here. Then I have this bird. I'm going to place him right there. 
And let's see how many blank spots I have left. I have three. So I am going to take this one that says best ever. Add some glue. And we're going to place that right there. So all I'm doing is just building up a nice little collage of words and whatnots. Then I have this sweet little fairy and I'm going to put down and I'm going to put her right there but I'm going to put her at an angle because I'm going to go back and add a word saying. So then I think I'm going to take this balloon and we'll place that balloon right there. So now I have these nice little word sayings. I might not use all of them, but I am going to use some of them. And I think I'm gonna put this one here where it says, hello you. Then I'm going to take this one and it says heart. And we're going to put it down where our little fairy is. Then I'm going to take this one that says hooray. And we're going to place that right there on our bird. So there is no right or wrong to what it is we're doing. We're just creating cuteness. So I'm going to take this one, I'm going to put it on that flower, and it says sweet. And I think I'm going to put something on the balloon, and that might be the last thing that I do. So I am going to take the one that says best ever, place it on the balloon. So now we have a nice little message everywhere that we turn. All right, so I had to get another empty ribbon roll because the glue on that one was just so tight that it was hard for me to separate it the way that I did the first one. So really what I'm trying to do is just peel off this piece And we're just going to peel it off top and bottom. So I am just going around to sort of get this started. And so then I have run these through my Xyron to put the adhesive on the back. And the Xyron is a sticker maker for those of you who aren't familiar with it. It turns items into stickers. And by placing them in my Xyron, I was able to create a sticker. So I am just going to place these down like this. And then I'm just going to trim out these two pieces. So once you have your pieces like this, we need to add paper to the back as well. So I added some sticky to the back. If you don't have a Xyron, you can do this with um, double stick tape. You can do it with glue stick. You can even do it with your tape runner. Or you can do it with glue. It's completely up to you. So I'm all out of this paper, so I'm going to use the polka dots, but you won't even see the polka dots because they'll be on the bottom. But I'm going to go ahead and just place this down on this scrap like this. And again, we're going to trim out. And so basically what I've done is I have sandwiched that ribbon top and bottom 
in between two pieces of cardstock, so that's really made it sturdy. So now that I have my two pieces like this, I am simply going to find my center in one of the pieces. And then I'm just going to punch through like that. Nothing fancy here, we're doing it very simply. So I am going to open this. Then I'm going to bring in that little square of chipboard and I'm just going to punch a hole, trying to get that hole centered like that. Then I'll take the largest metal snap that I have in my box and I'll have that linked in the description box below and I'm only going to use one half of that and it'll be the half that has the long prong on it. We're going to put that right through the middle just like that and then we're going to take it and we're going to put it through this piece like that and that's going to give us our spinning mechanism but to make sure that everything stays in place I am going to take my reptile and I am going to add my reptile all over this. And I want to make sure that I have glue so that that prong stays stuck as well. Then I'll feed it through the bottom, push that through, and we basically just let that dry. So then I'm going to take this scrap and I'm going to see if I can manage to get enough to be able to cover this part of the project. So I am basically just using this as my guide. Because I want to take this piece and we're simply going to place it around this piece. Now it looks like I don't have enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to take two pieces and put them together to cover this. So I'm just going to add some glue take one piece and we're going to get this nice and stuck making sure that I have good glue coverage and I'll clean up the overhang if there is some so we're going to get that stuck as well Then I'm going to take this piece and we're going to finish going around. So I only need about this much. So depending on the size of your ribbon roll, that will determine how much paper you actually need to be using. So this time I'm just going to put the glue on the paper. And we're going to take this and we're just going to place it down like that. Then I'm just going to bring in my scissors and just sort of clean up where I might have just a little bit of unsightly overhang. I don't see much. And then all we're going to do is take the piece that we glued the mechanism to and we are going to add some glue to this piece. We're going to take this piece and we're going to attach it to this piece just like this. Now, I'm not going to get that stuck just yet. So then we'll take this piece and we'll do the same thing. So we're going to add our glue going around the rim. And if we have some seepage, that's okay because I am using my reptile. So now I can take this piece and we're going to put it down like this. But before I stick it, I am just going to roll this to make sure that I have the top and the bottom nice and even. So that's my colored base. And because I have those raw edges showing, I am just going to go around that base 
with a little bit of my pink ink. Just to clean that up a little bit. And so now I am going to take my crystal knob and we're going to glue that crystal knob on the top. And I am going to use my reptile adhesive for this. So I am going to put some reptile on there as well as some reptile here because I want to make sure that as much of that paper is touching this as possible. So we're going to put that down like that and we do need to allow that to dry. And while the crystal knob is drying, let's go ahead and add some feet. Now I'm putting the feet on because I think it adds a cuteness to it. You don't have to add feet to yours if you don't have any. It's going to look fine even if it's just sitting flat. So I am going to put three feet on mine like that. And I'm placing these feet using my reptile adhesive. And then I'm going to place my third one like this. So you can see how I placed my feet. And now I'll flip it over and it's going to look like this and we're going to let that dry. So we have two things that we need to let dry. We have the feet drying and we have our crystal handle drying. As these are dry, I'll be back and we'll finish up the video. All right, y'all, so our feet are nice and dry and my crystal knob on this is nice and dry as well. So what we're going to have on the bottom is we'll have a little opening and through the opening, we'll be placing that metal snap prong that we placed down earlier. So all we need to do is take it and join the two together, just like that. And y'all, there we have it. We now have a spinning carousel card. So easy to make, and this is just so unique. I'm turning it sideways so that you can get a good look at it. But this really is beautiful enough to sit out on a mantle, on a desk, on the table beside your bed. Anytime you need to pick me up, just spin it to see all of the beautiful little messages that have been included. Now, I did not embellish mine much, but I am pretty sure that a lot of you can think of fun ways to embellish these little carousel cards. And like it says here, best ever. And I do think that this is a best ever must make project. So the last thing that I'm going to do to this one, and I'm not doing a whole lot, is I am just going to take some crinkle seam binding and just tie it. Now I have a nice little crinkle seam binding bow and I'm going to bring the first one back in and I'm going to spin it so that you can see that it does spin all the way around. I'm going to take that one, put it right there, right next to this one. Try to pick them up like this so that you can see just how stinking cute and sweet these are. So easy to make. We took a few pieces of ephemera, one piece of paper, we recycled a ribbon roll, added some feet and a crystal knob, and y'all, this is what we're able to make for pennies. It does not cost us a whole lot. We don't need die cutters to be able to do things like this. Just let your imagination be your die cutter. If you're able to imagine something, just sit down, play with it until you get it to look the way that you want it to look. So I really hope that you have enjoyed this super easy spinning carousel. If you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, y'all, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.